Hi, Coach. I know you have uh, another game before the Stanford game, but um, with the Stanford game being moved to uh, Santa Cruz, what was your involvement in that decision, and when did you find out about it? Um, I had no, I had no involvement. Um, you know, we just pretty much are uh, hoping to be able to play every game that we have scheduled and, uh, you know, looking forward to playing them this weekend. And uh, with, with the game coming up, uh, what have you seen out of them on film? You know, I haven't watched them. Uh, you know, we're, we're watching Cal Baptist at the moment. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry, Cal Baptist. Sorry. Cal Baptist. Well, you know, I think um, <clears throat> we had a good test a few weeks back that simulates uh, Cal Baptist somewhat in Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington uh, really utilizes the three-point shot. Uh, they shoot the ball at so many different positions and you see how quickly the game can change when a team shoots from the three point line with the accuracy that, uh, that Eastern Washington does and did. And obviously Cal Baptist is almost uh, more dependent in, in, uh, and shoots at a higher percentage. But if you look at the points that they get, from beyond the three point line in a 40 minute college game, you know, they rank right up there and, you know, tops in the country, top 10, top 20 in all of college basketball, depending on three point distribution. I mean, they just, uh, they can really shoot it. They have uh, really four guys that shoot a high clip, a high percentage. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's quite a challenge for anybody that plays them, you know, we obviously watched USC play them at the beginning of the season and Cal Baptist uh, made 23 point shots. So, you know, the fact that they made 23 point shots against USC and that game was an overtime uh, win by USC. Uh, we respect them a great deal. I think their coach does an excellent job and uh, you know, we're hard at work right now to get ready for that game. Steve Rivera, you're up next. Yeah, Sean, I know you're just five games in, but what have you consistently liked about your team? What have they done like consistently well? What I like the most about our team, Steve, is uh, just who our team is every day. And, you know, if, if this were normal times, uh, I would credit our team uh, with being a very good practice group. Show up every day, eager to learn, listen, you know, like uh, every team, some of our practices are better than others, but the effort level, uh, the concentration, the intent of our group uh, is really unquestioned at this point. You know, you throw in the sacrifices of getting up as early in the morning as they have done since late August, uh, you know, playing four games in eight days towards the end of uh, a fall semester where they're finishing up final exams, final papers and classes, uh, doing it, you know, in a remote way. I give our guys a lot of credit. They're a very responsible group. Uh, they're a very hungry group. They love the game and uh, really have been as good of a team as we've had in terms of working at it every day. You know, we're up to 40 practices um, since the, the, all of this began. And, you know, I really can't think of a single day where, you know, we, we had to address an attitude, uh, you know, different things that, can creep up uh, in, in sports today. I mean, our guys have really done a great job. That's that's what I would tell you that I really know as being true about our group, our team. And if I could, your freshman Benedict and Terry have been very, very confident. They've played confidently. Can you talk about your freshman group in terms of how they played and stepped up just in confidence? Yeah, I mean, we have quite a, a very good recruiting class. Uh, you know, Kirk Creesa hasn't been able to play because of eligibility. Daniel Bacho is uh, eight weeks since he had uh, his knee uh, surg surgery. So, you know, he's starting to rehab now. So, you know, those are two really important pieces to this year's team, but really important towards our future. But, you know, discounting them, uh, Tibet is also a freshman. Uh, you know, he's a development, a work in progress, just simply because uh, his strength and his weight. Uh, he'll get bigger, he'll get stronger. He's really working at that. 
But those three, I bring them to your attention because we really believe in all three of them in different ways. They're not really the guys you're seeing out there play. Um, in terms of Azulis, you know, considering that he's from a different country, uh, the English language, everything that just comes with uh, leaving one country and coming here to the United States, that's quite an adjustment. Uh, but he's uh, learning how to, uh, I believe, practice better. He's learning our system. And uh, although he's gotten in early foul trouble and maybe had some turnovers in our last game, uh, the best is yet to come for Azulis. He's going to be a very good freshman for our team this year. He already has been. And um, my hope is that you can see him really progress over the next month, uh, especially with the role that he has. I, I think that role will grow. Uh, ben and Dalen, you know, th those two guys are the two, uh, you know, they've been very consistent. You know, Dalen uh, is kind of the jack of all trades, very versatile, does it on defense, offense, uh, excellent passer. And uh, Ben can score the ball. One of the things we're really excited about Ben and, and really Dalen too, but especially Ben is, Ben has really rebounded. If you look at our numbers, he's one of our team's top rebounders. And you know, that says a lot for a wing player. So, uh, but those guys, because of the way they practice, uh, the way they carry themselves and the role that they currently have, uh, they'll continue to grow and improve like a lot of our freshmen have years gone by. Thanks, Sean. David Kelly, you're up next. Hey, Sean, with Benedict in particular, it seems like in a several games we've seen him kind of take the ball off the rebound and, and go the, to the other end and score. Like, did you anticipate he'd be able to be, to exhibit that type of aggression in transition this, this early on? Yes, um, you know, Ben is very good in transition. Uh, he has made some really good plays with the dribble, uh, kind of taking the ball coast to coast. But, you know, we, we allow our guards and our wings uh, to be able to take the ball off of a defensive rebound and push it, makes our transition game faster. It gives everybody different types of opportunities. But, you know, you're right, Ben has done a really good job and, uh, I think has thrived here in, in, in our transition game. Bruce Pasco, you're up next. Still on mute, Bruce. You're good now. You're good. You're I, good. Had, I, had, I had it on unmute. I don't know what happened there. Sorry. Um, Sean, I was just wondering, you mentioned Kerr again. At, is there anything new on that? Or is that like radio silence from the NCAA? Or is there any back and forth? Or what, what's, I mean, any update you can offer at this point? I don't have an update, Bruce. You know, I'm not involved in any of that. Um, whenever we, we hear something, um, you know, they'll let me know. And of course, we'll, we'll let you guys know, but not, not right now. Okay, and, but he's back to practice, is he? And, uh, and you know, in what sense is he mostly like a scout team player at this point? Or, you know, are you still working him in as if he might be eligible any day now? Or how do you approach that? No, he's a regular player in practice and he's returned to practice. Uh, it makes our practices much, much more competitive. Uh, you know, the quality of the players in practice determines so much. And, you know, our practices are just that much more competitive, faster, simulate the game more when he's a real part of of the action um, but no we're treating him uh, no differently than the guys that are eligible for the game you know first it, it's the best way to develop him as a player and he's so young that you know every time he has a chance to practice in a given week you know it develops him so that's one thing and then we're, we're still early on in that if he has the chance to play uh, we want him to be ready. So that, that's how we're approaching that. Okay. And also you mentioned um, Cal Baptist before and the style of play. I didn't know they're kind of, they seem like they're kind of an up and coming team that's just kind of transitioning into division one. I was just curious where you guys came about getting this game. I didn't know if you had a connection to any of their coaches or anything like that, or, you know, how did it come about, uh, you know, and, and, and do you know, you know, I, what kind of background do you know on these guys? No, no connection. Uh, certainly we respect their program uh, and their coach, uh, Rick. He does a great job, uh, you know, not just because of, of their, their recruitment of, 
so many skilled shooters, but they run really good offense. They uh, play hard. They're physical, disciplined, and, uh, you know, they're a winning program. So we looked at it as a, as a uh, smart team to play and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to play them and, and be successful. It, it will be a real test for us. Thanks. Ryan Wall, Daily Wildcat, you're up next. Yeah, hi, uh, Sean. Uh, I was wondering, you mentioned Daniel Baccio and Kirk Creesa. I was wondering, like, where, when they do eventually return, hopefully later in the season, where do you see them fitting into the rotation, either with Kerr maybe in the starting lineup eventually, or, yeah, like, where do you see that? No, I don't really have the answer just because I don't know the timing. Uh, you know, Daniel, we're going to really proceed with, with tremendous – caution making sure that he's healthy that he's had a chance to physically be rock solid and stable you know this is really a truly a year of development for him uh, once he had that surgery so you know we're hoping that eventually he's able to return to practice I think that's probable whether he'll ever be able to play in any games uh, that remains to be seen but you know Tibet and, and, and Daniel both will grow, develop, get stronger, learn our system, and really be older and that much more ready to contribute a year from now. Uh, with Kerr, it's just uh, we're in a holding pattern. Thank you. Troy Hutchison, you're next. Coach, with 40 practices and a bunch of international players, I know you were talking about how the European game is a little bit different from the college game. How do you think they've picked up the college game? Have they exceeded your expectations in learning how to play the game of basketball in the NCAA? For sure. You know, all of, all of our international players, you know, first and foremost, uh, they're great kids. You know, they came here uh, to be a part of college basketball. They came here to be a part of a great university. And, you know, they came here, they chose Tucson, a college town, a place where you know, they knew that uh, the university is supported, but they are going to be supported as a men's basketball player and a student athlete, athlete here at the University of Arizona. That, that's the foundation of, of why they chose our, our program and wanting to be a part of college basketball and to receive an education. And, you know, I think for us, that's one of the things that, uh, that we're hopeful wins out with, uh, with Kurt. And that's, why he came here and uh, so, but they, those guys have all practiced very hard. Uh, they work hard, they're, they're great teammates, they listen. You know, I think the, the English language for each of them might be a little bit different. You know, somebody like Ben, for example, from Canada, doesn't have maybe as, as big of a uh, discrepancy or learning curve as guys coming, you know, from Europe, but each of them, you know, it, it's, pretty cool to watch them develop the English language skills as they both understand it easier when you talk and they're more fluent speaking when they talk. Uh, you know, they're all of them have made so much progress since August until now. And, you know, use Dusan Ristich as the example. I mean, Dusan was one of those guys who was very quiet at the beginning and, you know, towards the end of his senior year, he could have been our team's spokesman. And so, you know, just kind of watching uh, these young guys follow in those footsteps, it's, uh, it's nice to see. And, uh, you know, they're not around interacting with the students as much either. So, you know, I think their learning curve is even more steep because I think talking to them where, where you get a chance to be more comfortable with, you know, listening and learning is the more people that you talk to your peers. So they've been able to, uh, to make the progress that they've made without, you know, a lot of their fellow classmates contributing, you know, to their progress. But we're thrilled to have all of them. Uh, they're all going to be very good players for us. Some of them are already impacting uh, our program as freshmen. Steve Rivera, you're up next. Sean, given that the Cal game was postponed till later, how much more prepared are you for the Pac-12 than you were a couple weeks ago? I mean, Colorado, Colorado. Yeah, game. the first game. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I think we, we're more prepared. Uh, certainly it's the combination of playing games, having success in games, learning in games of what we can do better, uh, experience in games coupled with practice. 
Uh, we've had some great stretches of practice, but you learn right away the value of scrimmages and division two game and even our red blue game, all that, it, you know, adds to being ready, progressing. So uh, we've played five games. You know, um, I think this, this week is another opportunity for our team to learn and grow. And hopefully, you know, we're playing the game to win as well. So uh, you get confidence, um, but no doubt because of so many new faces and so many players that are in roles this year that they weren't in a year ago, um, we're inexperienced. So we're vulnerable at the very beginning. And I don't think we'll be as vulnerable. We'll, we'll progress as the year goes on. So uh, we're going to be more ready uh, as we play these games later in the year. Thanks. David Kelly, you're up next. Hey, Sean, Greg Byrne once famously said that you were one of the people that kind of turned him on to Rich Rodriguez when he was looking for a head coach. Just curious if you've offered any advice to Dave Heek or if he's asked for any. Yeah, I mean, Greg, I think what Greg was referring to is just I didn't do anything to hire or not hire anyone as much as I, him and I just had a conversation. Uh, but no, uh, I don't have anything to do with that. Um, I'm wishing you know, the search in the university well. And, and also, you know, really uh, my heart goes out to Kevin Sumlin, his coaching staff, Kevin's family, the players that played on our football team this year. It's, it's never an easy thing when a coaching change happens for anybody, those that made the decision and uh, obviously those that are affected. So, you know, we hope that the, the future, uh, the new coach who comes in here, uh, can hit the ground running and could be a great resounding success. And, you know, simultaneous with that, uh, we're certainly wishing uh, all the coaches and players that were here uh, this past year uh, the very best and, uh, you know, safe and happy holiday. Yeah, and just with Jordan Brown, I know you, you, um, you know, he had the one game where he kind of had the foul trouble and, and you talked about, you know, the flopping potential issue that, that was maybe developing. Did, did you kind of find that that was maybe just a one game anomaly or, or have you had to maybe work with him a little bit more on, on just kind of how he addresses his moves down in the post there? Well, Jordan's one of these players that I'm referring to when I talk about having a new role, you know, he's not in the category of a freshman but you got to remember he doesn't have a lot of game experience at Nevada. He was a role player on a very, very good team as a freshman. And although he was with us last year and he did practice and gain strength, uh, you know, with COVID April, May, June, July, August being completely different for him, you know, he wasn't able to continue to gain. I, I think some of the momentum that he really had going throughout the year to, to finish off that year in waiting, um, but uh, Jordan's a really important player on our team. He's a very important player in our future. I think he has got an, an incredibly bright future. But early on here, as you see, he's had some really good games. He's been up and down. He's had some games maybe where things haven't worked out as well. Uh, he's learning what it feels like to play two positions in our game. You know, playing the four with Christian. You know, we're asking Jordan to guard sometimes a perimeter shooter on the other team, uh, defend away from the basket. In that same game, he guards the other team's center. Uh, we always try to get him the ball in and around the basket. He's one of our best low post scorers. And, you know, we do that at both positions. So he has a lot going on here early on through the first five games. Uh, he's a great example of the more games we play, the more sure of himself he'll become, the more he'll develop. I think the more he'll settle in, but Jordan's had a, a really good stretch here. He works hard every day in practice. He's productive in our practices. And I think he's shown everyone some signs that he can really play. And now it's a matter of helping him become more consistent. And, and I feel like he'll do that as he gets more experience. Bruce Pasco, you're up next. Sean, just a quick follow-up on Daniel. Uh, I was just curious about the fact that anybody can get this year back. I mean, does that make it easier in the sense that maybe in mid-February he's cleared and you have a game you don't mind testing him in, you can go ahead and do it? No, you're right, Bruce. Uh, that's a fair point. You know, I, I just don't have all the information yet, but, 
you know, you could play him down the home stretch of our season if he's healthy and capable and it doesn't count against him. So uh, we, we see it the same way you do. And I, and I would really say the same thing about Kerr if he was allowed to play at some point. Okay. Is Daniel able to help you guys in any way? Is he charting anything in practice or doing anything to kind of keep his hand in it while he's basically um, unable to play? No, he's eight weeks today post-surgery. So he's really into his rehab. Uh, you know, he's in that not so fun phase where he's on the bike with uh, rounds. He's in the weight room a little bit extra with rounds. He's trying to get his cardio back, build his leg strength up. And then he's also really working with Justin Kukowski, re rehabilitating, you know, the strength and flexibility exercises that he's allowed to do. And, and you know, once he's able to do that, then he progresses. But uh, he, he's come a long way in eight weeks. Uh, he's a hard worker. And I think he'll make a lot of progress over the next month as well. Okay. And I, I know you said, you, obviously, you haven't got the Stanford yet. But um, I didn't know with the tight turnaround if you be, are willing to address them tomorrow after the game or, 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 or now. I mean, because you know a lot of those guys, you know, Zaire, et cetera. I was just wondering, you know, your general thoughts on them or, or if you'd rather address well, you know, I am familiar with Stanford. And I've had a chance to watch them in, uh, you know, the, the Asheville tournament that they played in. They, they also played against Indiana, you know, my brother's team. So, uh, you know, clearly I have a good familiarity with what happened in that game. But, um, you know, I'll start with Zaire. He's uh, one of the most talented players that we've recruited, you know, in the 12 years that I've been here at Arizona. I mean, he's an outstanding player and as athletically gifted and talented as he is, you know, I think he's equally bright on and off the court. And, uh, and very skilled shooting the ball. And sometimes at that height, uh, at that age, you know, shooting kind of follows the athleticism just because they're so talented, they don't necessarily have to invest in their shot. Zaire, you know, he really has both. He's really skilled and he's very athletically gifted. You know, I think he's one of the best players in the Pac-12, uh, one of the best young players in college basketball. And like I had mentioned, someone that we really wanted uh, in the recruiting process, and you know we weren't able to to get him. That happens, uh, but I know adding him to the team that Stanford has, what what makes Stanford such a good team is that you know they return a lot of the parts from last year. You know, successful players, upperclassmen in some cases that have had big roles in their program almost from the onset from their freshman year. And uh, they have that, that talent and experience, returning talent, returning starters, uh, and successful players entering, you know, their last couple of years uh, at Stanford. And then you mix in a guy like Zaire, you know, that's when magical things happen. So uh, we know they're one of the best teams in our conference. Uh, and uh, we know that playing them away from Mikhail, which would be our first road test, is going to be quite a test, a big, big challenge. And, uh, you know, I'll say we're excited about playing Pac-12 basketball. It's been some time since we played a, a Pac-12 opponent. You know, we had our Colorado game canceled. So uh, we're looking forward to going up there and, you know, hopefully we'll be ready. And, and as far as that game being, I know everything's new and weird and different this year, but just playing that game in, a, I guess, the G League gym there in Santa Cruz, what, what's your thoughts on that? You know, we have to be ready, Bruce, for all different scenarios, as you know. I mean, we're not the only team that's going to be affected with our with our own schedule and venues of the opposing team, et cetera. And being flexible, uh, being innovative, uh, you know, staying poised, you know, really uh, just trying to be consistent with our approach. You know, that's really where uh, I think the foundation for this year's success lies and you know not getting caught up in the uh, complaining or excuses things are going to happen but being the most ready and capable that we can be and uh, playing a road game in a conference like the Pac-12 is is challenging and being that it'll be our first game away from McHale that in and of itself will be challenging for our group but Stanford is a very good team and I think the other part about Stanford is they're one of uh, college basketball's best defensive teams. I mean, they're really 
really outstanding on the defensive side of the ball. They were a year ago, and uh, I think they've picked up and continued that this year. Thanks. Uh, Jason Barr, you're up next. Coach, do you know, before I ask, do you know which player is following you in this news conference? It's, I mean, I'm sorry. No, I don't, Jason. Dalen Terry, Jason. Okay. Dalen. Okay, well, well, I'll ask you about Dalen then. It seems like he does a little bit of everything for you, and boy, it seems like he's got a lot of a potential. You know, he's raw, but you really see the talent there. Can you talk a little bit about him and, and what he brings? Uh, I think you talked about Matherin earlier, but I'm not sure if you mentioned Dalen. What, what are some of the things that you've seen from him? I mean, you put him in the starting lineup, so you must see a lot of good things from him so far. Yeah, no, Jason, you're right. Uh, first and foremost, Dalen is 18 years old, as is Ben, you know, and, and they're not going to turn 19 until they're sophomores. So uh, that's really a great characteristic or attribute that that Dalen has, because what that tells you is, you know, he's got huge upside. Uh, the other part about Dalen is, I think his size is is very deceptive. You know, he's been a thin almost skinny guy, you know, kind of growing up here uh, in high school. But, you know, Dalen stands almost six foot seven and his wingspan is I think seven feet, one inches. So he's got really long arms and great size and he's starting to get bigger and stronger now. And as he gets bigger and stronger, I think you'll see that he's got a really outstanding basketball body that allows him to do a lot of different things play a lot of different positions. He's not a small, small kid at all. Uh, the other part of it is, you know, he's played a lot of point guard and, you know, we can use him as a point guard. He might eventually play point guard here, you know, with James Akinjo and Terrell Brown and Jamal Baker, Kerr. You know, I think Dalen's best opportunity this year is to be in the game with them. But having said that, he really sees the floor well. Uh, he passes the ball well. He's very unselfish uh, when he's in the game. You know, I feel like the ball moves up and down the court and the ball just, it has an energy about, about it. And a lot of it is, you know, we got to go willing passer, smart player, and a guy that sees the floor really well. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, he's a great competitor. He's smart for somebody who is as young as he is. And, you know, we're asking him to guard a variety of different types of players, two guards, at times power forwards. Uh, he could switch on to the other team's point guard. And uh, because of his work ethic and his talent, you know, the best is yet to come. He's going to get better. He makes mistakes sometimes in games, all freshmen do, but he learns from those mistakes. And uh, the reason that we're starting him is he's one of our five best players right now. You know, he's really earned it. So... The other part of Dalen that I love is uh, he's always in the gym. You know, him and Jason Terry, they shoot every morning. Uh, and I would say the weakness of Dalen coming to Arizona is, you know, he's a very streaky shooter. And um, you're going to see that his shot is going to continue to improve because uh, I haven't coached too many guys who put the work in that he puts in on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, so I've given you some really good things. Great work ethic, smart, very, very young, has a unique basketball body, and somebody who's six foot seven. You know, usually, you don't talk about their passing ability. So, I think I think the sky's the limit for him. Uh, he's a very unique player, and I'm glad he's with us. And uh, also, there's a lot of dog cardboard cutouts at McHale. Are you aware of where Lambert is on, on the court? Do you know where he is sitting? Yeah, he's uh, he's like right behind me there, kind of right over my uh, my right shoulder. Yeah, so he's actually right here. He's, he's never far from where I'm at. Very hmm. good, thanks. All right, we'll wrap it up with Bruce Pasco. Last question, John. I was just going to ask you if I had time here. Uh, just in general, you talk about the sacrifices the guys are making, and, and of course, everybody is across the game, but you guys still have had, you know, re reported no issues yourself, just your opponents so far. And I'm wondering, you know, is there anything else you're doing to kind of bubble the guys up or, you know, are they, are they making sure they're not going out to eat or, or seeing too many people, anything like that that's, that's kind of off the court made a difference to, to keep this team in, in a good, good spot health-wise? 
Yeah, I mean, yes, Bruce. Uh, first of all, it's just the, the collective responsibility of the group doing the best that they can and following, you know, the same rules that you're trying to follow, you know, wearing a mask in public you know, not getting close, touching people like you used to, uh, staying inside as much as you can. You know, our guys get tested every day. You know, they're healthy. I mean, we've tried to encourage them to go as far as, you know, washing their hands more thoroughly or more often. But having said that, as we know, you could try to be perfect, but when you get it, if you get it, it doesn't mean that you didn't follow protocol. You know, what I worry about is one of our players getting it and feeling the guilt, you know, the kind of the mental health part of this, that they've impacted a team or teammates, et cetera, because they did something wrong. I mean, uh, look, you know, we're all trying the best we can, but we're going to be impacted. And uh, when that time comes, you know, that's the next challenge uh, for us to uh, handle that as well as we can, making sure that our players are in a safe environment and then uh, bouncing back and returning to form. But nobody really knows, you know, what that future holds. So um, I'm not eager to answer the question of, hey, we're doing great, great things. I mean, clearly the results of our team should at least tell you that, uh, that we're trying hard to, uh, to do things the right way. Do you guys even have like training table meals or anything together at this point, or is everything like a box lunch and, and you do it on your own kind of thing? Or Yeah, everything's really to go. Everything's in a box. You know, everything that when we're in a closed space, we have the doors wide open, we're in a clean area. We all have masks on. We try to, uh, do things in shorter bursts. You know, if you were in a film of a 20 minute session, I think that's that's been cut in half to 10. You know, we don't do it as often, try to have big space, uh, but you know, we're, we're trying to do things. I don't even want to act like we do things any better than anybody. We're just doing the best we can in this environment. Yeah. Like I I think gonna, a right. lot of sports teams are. I was wondering as a coach, if you have to think about this whole contact tracing implication and maybe as you get closer to a game, do you actually make sure everybody's away no more than 15 or 14 minutes or whatever? I mean, does it come to that where you, where you have to keep that in mind, at least on the off chance you had a positive that you don't want to knock too many guys out? No, I mean, we're really lucky here. I mean, our athletic department in uh, Justin Kokoski, who's our trainer, you know, Dr. Paul and his team of doctors, uh, you know, everybody's really pulling the rope in the same direction. And, you know, I made my mind up uh, early on in the summer. Uh, you know, my job is to coach these guys, uh, right, to make sure academically they're in a good place, make sure that our practice environment is as is, is well thought out and as good as it can be, prepare for games. Uh, the COVID, it's, you know, I think the responsibility you have as a coach is just to listen and follow the guidelines. So I, I try not to overthink it. Um, you know, roommates on the road, how we travel, when we travel, if we travel, all of those things have been well thought out by those that, that should be thinking about it. And that's that team of doctors, the PAC 12 office, you know, our athletic department, Justin. So I just, I listen to them and we listen to them as a coaching staff. So um, I, I'm really, I start thinking about, you know, COVID and roommates. I mean, uh, you know, your, your head explodes. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks coach. Appreciate the time. We'll have a, uh... Dale and Terry here hop on shortly. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.